viewers to the eighth episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the August 2023 Mathematics Paper 2. So the first seven episodes covered question one through seven. So if you haven't seen those episodes, please go to our YouTube channel and check for the playlist that contains all the solutions to the questions in this paper. And also take note that we've done paper one. There is a playlist that contains a solution to all the 23 questions in the paper one from the GCE exams for 2023. And also take note that we have various playlists for various subjects according to the topics. It's important that you go through some of those playlists if you are struggling with a particular topic. It helps you to cement the concepts and be confident enough to approach the exams. So let us move to question 8M. The diagram shows the flustum of a cone. The perpendicular height is 40 centimeter. The top and the bottom led are 10 centimeter and 30 centimeter respectively. Take pi as the 3.142. Calculate the volume of the flustum. So let us first of all focus on question A, which carries six marks. Then when we're done, we move to question B. So when you look at question A, generally, when you ask this question, there are two approaches that we can use. You can just normalize the formula and go with the volume of the flustum given the volume of a coin, coin to beam, pi one third, pi r square then height. The volume of the flustum, we can just go with v is equal to one third pi multiplied by r square then plus c which is the radius of the base then r square the radius of the top top then plus c radius multiplied by r then multiplied by eight once you do that you just substitute then you get the answer so that's the easiest way you can do that so under normal circumstances, we just go to v is equal to, we have one third multiplied by 3.142 multiplied by, we go to a 30 square, which is this one, you square it then plus in, the smaller one is 10 square, you square 10 then plus in, 30 times in, 10, then multiply by it, the height which is in, 40. Then use your calculator, once you use your calculator, we simplify that one. What you are going to discover is the answer you are going to get is in five four, which is fifty four thousand four hundred and sixty one point three three centimeter cubic. You want to use your calculator. So you get that answer quickly if you can remember the formula. Now, if you can't remember the formula, you can still get the question correct. So this is where now you need to understand the, the principle what is happening behind. So let me just try to explain. So what is happening behind is this. So we have this cut. The normal cone would be something like that. So this is the height, then this is the height. So here, if you understand this, then you can just skip, skip, then you go to question B, the part where question B starts. But if you want to understand the concept, then you need to follow this. So now, what we know is from here to here, this is the 40. Then the overall height, which is up to here, this is the H for the entire cone. Then we have a mean cone on top, this mean cone, whose height starts from there going upward. Okay, so this mean height, which I will do in black, this one up to here, this one is in small h. So, to find the big h is equal to the 40 that we know, which is up to here, so it will be 40, plus the height of a small cone, which is on top. This gives us the entire height from here to the top. Then, the radius of the bigger cone, which is this base, is in 30. 
then the height of a smaller one we don't know it then the radius of the smaller one is 10 so now we need to know the height of the large cone so if you know the height of the large cone then we can use the equation of this one so to find the volume of your flaster it will be one third pi r square multiplied by i which is the volume of the entire cone which is the large one so the large one is from here up to the top then we subtract this volume for a smaller one so now we are going to subtract minus pi one third of pi then small radius square then small height so we need to know this small height once we know this small height we know the bigger height if you can know that we know this radius the radius is known and this one is known so what we need to know is to know this one and this one so now that's why we are saying the large radius is known the small radius is known the overall height is not known but we know up to here so to find that one we use this principle that the height of the large cone the entire cone divided by, by its radius must equal to the height of a small cone which is the one that stop, starts on top going upward like this then divide by the radius of the smaller one that's the principle that we use so using that principle we can easily now deal with this situation easily and find the answer as quick as possible so the bigger you see this one so it will be 40 plus h over the radius is 13 then equal to the height of a smaller one is what you're looking for over the smaller one the radius is this one which is 10 then we can just do single cross multiply so we're going to have 40 plus h is equal to 30 multiplied by h which is 30h we multiply this 30 and h then divide by 10 then this one into this one will remain with 3 so we have a 40 plus h is equal to 3h we are looking for h so it's 40 is equal to 3h minus h so we end up with him 40 is equal to 2h then we divide by 2 we divide by 2 so we have 20 is equal to h so small h is equal to 20 then what will be large h so it will be equal to 40 plus 20 which is equal to 60 so what this tells us from the bottom here all the way up to the end you see 60 centimeters so up to here this is 20 centimeter so the entire it becomes 60 so once we know the value of h the bigger h then it's easier to find the volume of the flash term even if you forgot the formula so you just come and use this formula so let us go to where there is space and use that formula so now the volume of the flash term is equal to one third multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius of the bigger one which is 30 we square it then multiply by the height so the height of the bigger one we found it to be 60 so we multiply by 60 then minus one third now we go to a smaller one which is on top it will be the same pi then the radius of the smaller one is 10 this 10 that's it the radius of the smaller cone so what now we have here is the 10 square then multiplied by the height which is 20 remember just from calculating h this is 20 so once you do that you are good to go then we have one third multiplied by 3.142 which is pi then multiplied by 30 square which is 900 this is 60 then multiplied by 60 then minus one third multiplied by 3.142 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 20 so at this point this becomes straightforward you have one third multiplied by 3.142 multiplied by 54,000 minus one third multiplied by 3.142 multiplied by 2,000 
so once you do this you discover that you can just factor out this one here one third multiplied by 3.142 because these are the same you notice that these are the same so then multiply by it. the difference is now 52,000 so now you can use your calculator and you discover that you're going to end up with the same answer 54,461.33 centimeter cubic so this is how you answer this question to get the six marks so the choice is yours if you're able to do it quickly you and remember the formula you go with it this one by just using this formula then you're good to go all right so let us move to question e, b question b leads four towns a which is on 70 north and 65 degrees west then b 70 degrees north and 65 degrees east c is 70 degrees south and 65 degrees east and d 70 degrees south 65 degrees west are on the surface of the earth take pi as 3.142 then radius is equal to 34 37 nautical miles sketch the surface of the earth showing all the four towns a b c and d thus two max so this is quite straightforward so what we do is we just make a sketch of the earth so we know that this is 70 degrees north so it will be here somewhere this will call it 70 degrees north then we have so there are two there then we have 70 degrees south so I'll also do 70 degrees south somewhere here let me just make it a bit like that so that uh -huh. so we have that so I'll call it remember this is a sketch 70 degrees south then we have air which is 70 degrees north 65 degrees west so we are going to draw the west so the west will pass uh, in this direction so this will be west so let us say this is point a so this is becomes uh, 65 degrees west then we are done with point m which is here then we go to point b which is 70 degrees north 65 degrees east so this one will pass somewhere here let me use a black one like that so this one becomes 65 degrees east and this is where b will lie so b will be here so this will be point b then we have c's 70 degrees south 65 degrees east so this will be c so c will be here then we have d which is 70 degrees south 65 degrees west so this will be here as in d so it will be there so once you make that sketch you are good to go and you get these two marks loma numeric two calculate in nautical miles the distance a b along the latitude 70 degrees north so we're looking for a b so we're looking for the distance between a and b this distance is what you're looking for so because it is along the north latitude and it's not along the equator which is one of the great circle so to find the distance we need to use this formula which is now a b so this will be lo a loma numero 2 so a b will equal to the theta so it will be this theta the angle subtending these two points so it's this angle divide by 360 multiply by 2 pi radius cos the degree of this latitude like this so to find the difference between these two we know that this is west this is east so you just add the two so it will be just 65 plus 65 which will give us 130 degrees so this is the angle that is subtending these two sides so this is what you are going to put here this one so we are going to have 130 over 360 so 130 over 360 then multiply by 2 
pi, what's the pi? 3.142 multiplied by um, the radius which is 34, 37 then we multiply by cos so cos is the latitude so because of space I'll use this one so multiply by cos what's the latitude? 70 degrees that's the latitude then after that what we do is just a matter of simplifying so it's a matter of simplifying the answer so we can use the calculator once we use the calculator what we discover that this becomes straightforward and we're going to end up with 2667.52 when you give this one to three significant figures becomes 2670 nautical miles then you are good to go then BC along longitude 65 degrees east so now you see this line we are moving along this line which is a great circle so because the answer is in nautical miles we can use this formula which say now b of loma which is bc is equal to the angle subtending those two towns then multiply by 60 that's what we use so the angle subtending these two is it can be found by doing this so this is the, the equator we are looking for this angle so if this is 70 degrees north this is 70 degrees south so to find the difference we just add the two this will be 140 degrees because this is at zero so here there is 70 here there is 70 and hence we are getting 140 so now we come here we just say 140 multiply by uh, 60 so we multiply these two you're going to discover that you're going to end up with 8,400 nautical miles as in the answer. So once you do this, you are good to go and you get the two marks plus the other two, we get a total of 12 marks. So this is how you answer this question to get the 12 